Welcome to another episode of Grammar is Power. In this three-part video series, you'll learn how to recognize, use, and punctuate adjective clauses. Just like all clauses, adjective clauses are subject-verb combinations. Unlike independent clauses, they cannot stand alone as sentences. As their name indicates, they function as adjectives in their sentences, modifying the noun or pronoun in front of them. In other words, they're going to answer questions which one and what kind. Adjective clauses begin with relative pronouns or relative adverbs. That's why you may hear some people identify adjective clauses as relative clauses. Adjective describes the function of the clause and relative explains how it begins. Flashback alert. Earlier, you learned about adverb clauses. They function as adverbs and begin with subordinating conjunctions. Both adverb and adjective clauses are types of dependent clauses. Let's start by looking at relative pronouns in depth. Besides beginning adjective clauses, they stand in for the nouns or pronouns that the clauses modify. As pronouns, they have antecedents, the words they stand in for, in the independent clauses. They often serve noun functions in their own clauses. The most common relative pronouns are that, who, whom, which, and whose. While whose can be an interrogative pronoun in questions and can be a possessive adjective in independent clauses, in adjective clauses, whose serves as the only relative possessive. It both stands in for the antecedent and modifies a noun in its own clause. Since it is unique, it is categorized as a relative pronoun when it starts an adjective clause, even though it isn't technically performing a noun function. We follow the same steps you learned earlier with adverb clauses. The only difference is now you know another type of dependent clause, represented by DC. Remember that a clause includes all the words that modify the subject, the complete subject, and all the words that modify and complement the verb, the complete predicate. Let's analyze a few examples. The woman inspired millions is the independent clause, and who wrote the poem is an adjective clause describing which woman. Who both stands in for the woman and serves as the subject in the dependent clause. That here is a demonstrative adjective modifying poem. The independent clause is, I read a poem. The adjective clause is, that touched my soul. It tells what kind of poem. That is a relative pronoun. It stands in for the direct object poem and serves as the subject of touched in the dependent clause. Which your friend recommended is an adjective clause modifying which book. The which begins the clause stands in for the book, and serves as the direct object for friend recommended. To parse the sentence, follow the same steps you learned earlier. Who or what recommended? Friend, that's the subject. Friend recommended what? Which, which is standing in for the book. Remember that each noun and pronoun can only serve one function. So book is the direct object in the independent clause. Therefore, it can't be the direct object of the adjective clause. The second dependent clause is adverbial. Because is a subordinating conjunction. Because it contained Maya Angelou's most famous poem tells why she purchased the book. Now you have a chance to practice parsing sentences and identifying adjective clauses. Follow the directions on your handout. Be sure to use a different color to correct your errors or to check off the sentence if you identified everything accurately. Who burned down houses is an adjective clause describing which fireman. Who refers to the fireman and serves as the subject. Burn down is a phrasal verb, a verb and a preposition-like word called a particle that form an idiom. That she found describes the dandelion. The relative pronoun that begins the adjective clause. It stands in for the dandelion and it serves as the direct object. She found what? that, referring to the dandelion, which is the direct object of the girl shares. Which houses the mechanical hound is the adjective clause describing the firehouse, which stands in for the fire station and functions as the subject in the dependent clause. The mechanical hound is the direct object of houses. 
Sentence four has two tricky bits. The adjective clause is whose job was to burn down houses, describing the fireman. Whose is the relative possessive pronoun. Its antecedent is fireman. It also modifies job, but doesn't serve a noun function. To burn down houses is a structure we haven't yet discussed. So kudos to you if you figured out that this is an infinitive phrase and it's the predicate nominative. It follows a B verb and renames the subject job. Adjective clauses begin with either relative pronouns or, as you're about to learn less often, with relative adverbs. Relative adverbs begin adjective clauses and function as adjectives. Most of them are limited to only a few possible sentence wordings. For example, why, as a relative adverb, can only follow the word reason, as in the reason why. Compare these two sentences. We saw the first one earlier. A slight rewording of the second sentence illustrates the use of where as a relative adverb. Take a moment to identify the adjective clause. The adjective clause here, describing the house, is an inverted pattern one clause. First, remember that here and there are never subjects, and they indicate a clause in which the subject follows the verb. Where both starts the relative clause and functions as an adverb of place. Where is the adjective clause in this sentence? Here's an example of the relative adverb why used with reason. And one more practice sentence. When is the relative adverb starting the adjective clause identifying which day? Who and whom are pronouns that rename people while that and which rename animals and objects? Some grammar texts allow for the use of that for people, but as usage evolves over time, who is becoming more standard in reference to people rather than that? Read these two sentences and notice the awkwardness of the pronoun choices. We can't use the relative pronoun who to refer to a dog, and we can't use which to refer to a person. We could replace the incorrect relative pronouns with the correct ones. However, there are stylistic weaknesses in both sentences that could be eliminated with a little bit more revision. Besides replacing be and linking verbs with powerful action verbs, here are three additional strategies to strengthen your writing style. The original sentence contains unnecessary words and passive voice. The revision here is much more concise. The revised sentence adds more descriptive details and elaboration while eliminating that passive voice. Time for a concept check. On your handout, follow the directions to parse the sentence. Pause the video and restart it when you are finished. The sentence opens with a prepositional phrase, with garden as the object. The adjective clause describes the garden, which was enclosed, and is a pattern for sentence in passive voice with a prepositional phrase. We could rewrite it as high stone walls enclose the garden if we wanted to change it to active voice. Next, we have the independent clause in the sentence, the family grew the food. Describing the food, the adjective clause begins with that, functioning as the direct object. They needed what? That, standing in for the food. Then we have a compound subordinating conjunction, so that, beginning an adverb, not an adjective clause, telling why they grew the food. The sentence concludes with another adjective clause that describes the villagers with the possessive pronoun whose. See you next time.